Hello and welcome to the Wheels Boy channel. Our most popular video by far is our review of the Hongqi H9, but that created somewhat of a problem for us. How do you follow up a car like the H9? Why, you would need something that was bigger, bolder, and preferably all electric. Something like this. Meet the Hongqi EHS9. Strap in, folks, because this thing makes the H9 look positively normal. Subtlety can be a powerful tool when it comes to design, but do you know what else can be a powerful tool? A hammer. The design of the EHS-9, well, it's a hammer. A blunt force weapon that dominates you and forces you to look at it and give it the attention that it so deserves. From the shape of the headlights to the size and just width of the grille, it demands your attention. Its resemblance to the H9 sedan is unmistakable. Its resemblance to some other, particularly much more expensive cars is also arguably inescapable, but I'll let you guys talk about that more in the comment section below. Personally, I dig it. I think few cars manage to achieve the level of outrageousness and fun that this one does. Much like the H9, part of that outrageousness is the front lighting, which includes the lower headlight units, as well as the upper LED daytime running lights, and the LED strips that run the length of the front end. The piece de resistance, however, is the red strip in the middle, which also lights up. It's intended to evoke the Hongqi brand name, which means red flag in Chinese. Coming around to the side profile of the EHS-9, we can see the absolutely massive proportions of the front bonnet. Uh, we can also see the 21-inch wheels that are almost made to look small in comparison. Almost, but not quite. We also have the charging door here. This is the alternating current charging door, or the slow charge door. And then over here, we also have another one of these uh, red elements that's supposed to evoke the Hongqi Red Flag brand's name. Now, I'm not a huge fan of this one in particular. I don't really like the look of it. But one thing I really like the look of is the roof line of this car, which is, dare I say, elegant to look at. There's a chrome strip here that runs along the top of the greenhouse all the way to the end. And then obviously, there's a nice chrome element here that intersects with it. So it reminds me of something you might see on a, a power boat or an airplane even. As an added bonus, there are lights embedded in here that will show the charging status of the car when it's plugged in. The rear taillights were a design highlight on the Hongqi H9 in my opinion, and the same remains true for the EHS9 as well. I especially like this part here that cuts into the rear fender. Here in the rear taillight, we also get an even more obvious homage to the Hongqi red flag logo when it lights up. Overall, it's a very handsome design. On top here, we can see the Hongqi name in Chinese as well as down here in English. Rear cargo space in the EHS9 is just as capacious as you would think considering the actual length of this vehicle. Even with a third row up, there is plenty of usable space back here. Should you like to put it down and have even more space, you can do that with a touch of a button. You can do these independently. Just hold this down. You can also electronically raise the seats when you're done using them. Once you've done that, you can also go over here to the side and hit this button to raise or lower the air suspension on the car in order to make things easier to get in or out. Before we jump in to talk about the interior design of this car, I want to tell you a little story about the owner. First of all, a big thanks to him for letting us borrow the car, but he did say something very interesting the first time he let us drive it. One of the main reasons he bought this car is because he says he wanted something low key. Allow me to explain. Here in China, buying a car like a Mercedes-Benz or a BMW is seen as a way to get attention. Buying a local brand, say a Hongqi, would normally be much less attention-seeking. Of course, the EHS-9 is not a normal car. It wasn't until he started noticing people on the side of the road taking pictures of him as he drove by that he realized his mistake. However, he still loves it.
The interior design of the EHS-9 manages to maintain the same sense of occasion that the exterior has. This is not a cheap car, with prices ranging from $84,000 to $114,000 US dollars. Most cars, particularly electric cars of this price range, have a very clean, high-tech, simple kind of design to them. The EHS-9, on the other hand, has more of an old-school luxury touch to it, what with its traditional shift lever surrounded by wood paneling, uh, as well as the burgundy color palette that looks like it came out of a 1980s Lincoln, not to mention the patterns here on places like the center console, as well as the seats. Now that doesn't mean the EHS-9 is low-tech, not by any means. I don't think you're going to find three 16.2-inch screens in any Cadillacs out of the 1980s, at least none that I'm aware of. The three screens are divided like this. There is your instrument cluster, your center screen, and your passenger media screen. Not only can this control media, it can also control the navigation, which, in my opinion, makes it actually useful. The center screen, the menus within it, are fine. The response times are pretty good, pretty snappy, but I would say the menu design is, is not great. Lots of text, kind of difficult to navigate, in my opinion. Your fourth and final screen is down here, and that one is used to control your climate controls. For a car as big as this, I must say I'm not particularly impressed with the storage solutions here. There is, of course, your cup holders with adjustable depth, something I've never seen in any other car, to be honest. There is the center console area here, which is quite deep, but not very wide. Two USB ports for charging. Down here, you have uh, what is probably the most convenient place to put your phone, but it's not actually a wireless charging pad, which surprises me. For a car as expensive as this, I would have expected the wireless charging pad to be there. One rather clever solution, however, is the door pocket over here, which I also think looks very nice. Space-wise, for passenger, passengers, however, not a lot to complain about. Plenty of space to stretch out and move around, and very comfortable, very wide seats. While I enjoy the overall look and material choice for the interior, I can't say the material quality quite lines up with cars in the same price point. There's just a little bit more cheap plastic than I would expect, and there are some areas where the padding just isn't as nice as some other cars that are actually a little bit cheaper than this one. I wouldn't go so far as to say it feels cheap by any means, but it's not quite up to the standards that I would expect. Rear seat space is quite copious, as you might expect. Plenty of legroom and headroom. Very comfortable seats. Fold down armrest. Folding airline style headrest. Not a lot of adjustability, honestly. And as far as functions go, the only ones you're going to find are down here on this little screen. And that would be your heated and cooled seats, as well as your air conditioning controls. And even below that, you have a bunch of power outlets. Let's have a look at rear seat space, third row space. Ugh. Oh man. All right. I would say this is definitely enough space for an adult, but it's not a place you want to get stuck for a long road trip by any means. One good thing I'm noticing though, there are USB ports over here and also over here for each passenger, as well as your own air vents. And, oh, and look at that. Your own climate control control panel. The EHS-9 can be had with two different powertrains, both of which feature an electric motor mounted in the front and the rear. The first offers 320 kilowatts and 600 newton meters of torque, that's 430 horsepower and 444 pound-feet. The second option, and the one that's fitted to our test car, ups the power on the front-mounted motor for a total of 405 kilowatts and 750 newton meters of torque equal to 543 horsepower and 555 pound-feet. The lower output version comes matched to an 84 kilowatt hour ternary lithium battery pack with 460 kilometers of NEDC range, while the more powerful version gets a 99 kilowatt hour battery pack with a range of 510 kilometers. These ranges are achieved in part by the vehicle's adjustable energy recovery system, which is buried deep in the menu but does allow for one pedal driving. If you thought the interior design of this car had a whiff of old school luxury about it, just wait till you drive it. With the supple air suspension and plenty of power on tap, it was absolutely born for cruising. It also helps you have a natural air of superiority when you're looking out over a bonnet the size of a football pitch. This is a land yacht in the best possible sense of the word. 
my favorite thing to do is to slam down hard on the accelerator, let the rear end hunker down and watch the front end rise like the prow of a boat as it pushes forward. It's not especially fast with a zero to 100 kilometer per hour timer on five seconds, but it is satisfyingly dramatic. Of course, much like those old land yachts of yore, this thing kind of falls apart when it gets to the corner. Don't get me wrong, it's not as bad as a 1980s Cadillac like I mentioned earlier in the video, but it is a very big and very heavy car. At 5.3 meters, almost in length, and 2,600 kilograms, or nearly 6,000 pounds, it does drive just like you would expect a car that heavy to drive. What that means is when you throw it into a corner, using the very light steering, the body kind of rolls over on itself. Then again, this car never promised to be a sports SUV, despite the fact that there is, I must point out, a G-meter buried in the menu here, which is kind of fun to use. But really, the people who are buying this car, all they want to do is turn on the adaptive cruise control, point that giant hood in the direction of their destination, and sail. Well, there you have it. One thing you can certainly say for the EHS-9 is it does not write any checks that it cannot cash. It looks like a giant land yacht, and it drives like one, too. Is it the car that I would personally choose in this price segment? No, there's a couple of other ones that I would prefer, but honestly, I really wouldn't blame somebody who chose it, even if it was just for the looks. All right, thank you so much for joining us for today's video. Be sure to check us out on Instagram and Facebook, and as always, like, subscribe, and hit the bell. We'll